are the southernmost extreme of Los Angeles County other than Catalina Island? We're right now just west of Point Vicente on the Palos Verdes Peninsula on the California Coastal Trail. As we walk along the Palos Verdes Peninsula's segments of the coastal trail, uh, we are walking over millions of years of history. We're standing on, we're underwater probably about 120,000 years ago. If we dug straight down, we'd run into everything from shark's teeth, fish scales, uh, whale bones, mammoths, and saber-toothed cats, and giant bison, and things like that. Uh, just last year, a, a new species of sperm whale was discovered on the north side of the hill at Chadwick School. So we've, we've got a rich inventory of fossils, probably the second best source outside of the uh, La Brea Tar Pits. Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, we're a nonprofit land trust. and We work to preserve areas of open space and restore habitat for the education and enjoyment of all. So the Conservancy has been working for the past 26 years to work to preserve lands here on the peninsula and it's been a large part in collaboration with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Within the nature preserves here, in the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve, there are a lot of trails and there were a lot of trails existing and so for the most part we were able to delineate the routes of the coastal trail through the preserves and, and put the appropriate signage and emblem in place to denote them as part of the coastal trail. So a lot of the trails were in place. Californians, I think, have uh, for a long time appreciated the natural open space around the state. And in an age when we see more and more of the landscapes converted to generic landscapes of shopping malls and sub-developments, people are beginning to realize that there's something special about their landscape and people that have been here longer uh, see what's disappearing. So our organization, the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, was really founded by a, a small group of people who had a vision that uh, they wanted to preserve some of this open space before it was all gobbled up by development. We now have about 1,600 acres preserved on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, including segments along the coastal walk here where people can come out and see uh, not just natural vistas, but also where we have restored habitat. And this provides uh, both a, a truly native local landscape, but also habitat for native fauna for the wildlife, birds, and reptiles, and insects, and mammals, all those little creatures that we like to chase and stare at when we were kids, and which, uh, the way things are going, kids in future generations will have fewer and fewer opportunities to, uh, to wonder about. But we can preserve as much of it as possible so that future generations can see both what California may have been like uh, hundreds of years ago and that they can have that direct one-on-one -on -one experience with a lizard or a butterfly or just you know, stare at a flower. This is California sunflower and it's in the aster family. It's a beautiful sunflower and it, it is drought deciduous so it um, loses a lot of its leaves in the summertime. And beyond that is a purple sage plant which I just think they're so beautiful. They produce a lot of seeds which birds love. And over here to the left of that taller green shrub is a coyote brush or a baccarus plant. And um, I guess to the right, a little bit lower, is our sagebrush, Artemisia, which is really fragrant and um, one of the main plants within the coastal sage scrub plant community. That's a nice one. And pelicans. I love pelicans. I know, aren't they cool? Many people bring decorative plants from where they came from, things that make them remember home. But unfortunately, many of those plants have little or no habitat value. Local animals can't feed on them in many cases because they've got chemical defenses. We have a Palos Verdes blue butterfly that's not found anywhere else in the world. Uh, we have an El Segundo blue butter butterfly that's found along the coast of the peninsula here, north about as far as LAX, and nowhere else in the world. Each of those have very specific relationships with plants. So the Palos Verdes blue butterfly, for example, only feeds on two related plants, Astragalus and uh, deerweed or lotus caparius. 
The El Segundo blue butterfly only feeds on coastal buckwheat. So they're very specialized relationships and that holds true for many of the other plants and animals in the area. That uh, for the plants need a pollinator, for the animals need a food source, that their digestive juices can break down because the plants have their own defenses. Uh, because of the drought we've been having the last few years here in California too, there's a new interest in plants that are drought tolerant. And these plants are, uh, have literally had thousands of years to adapt to the climate whereas the exotics that we bring in require lots of water. They often require soil amendments, fertilizers, and things like that uh, to make them viable. So they're expensive to maintain. And as water rationing comes into effect, uh, they're, they're becoming a problem. Whereas native plants, they may go dormant and not look as attractive as we might like for the dry season. But they'll come back in the great majority of cases. And again, they have the value of providing habitat.